Hey, welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the yearly maintenance on a tankless water heater. So if you find this video to be helpful, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos. All right, so every year you have to do maintenance on your tankless water heater. Pretty much you got to descale it. That's the extent of the maintenance you gotta do. And it's really easy and something that you could do cheaply yourself. There's no real need to hire anybody. Um, the particular water heater I have is made by Renai. Uh, but the applications or the principles in this video is going to be applicable to a wide range of tankless water heaters because the setup is pretty much all the same. Um, the focus, uh, the things we're going to be focusing on pretty much is uh, the gas line right here, which is going to be the same for any water heater. Uh, the cold water inlet line, which is right here. And the hot water outlet line. And that's pretty much how a water heater works. There's cold water comes in, the gas heats it up, and it leaves us hot water. Now, the only other line we're going to be focusing on is... Uh, to flush out the system and whatnot is gonna be the pressure relief line or the pressure relief device, which is right here, um, which is a device um, that does just as um, it sounds, which is relieves any sort of emergency buildup of pressure in here. And we could also use this to drain out the water heater if need be. So uh, let's get to it and get this thing done. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna be doing is turning off the system and depressurizing it. So to do that, I'm just gonna hit the power off button right there. I'm also going to pull the plug, which is all the way over here. And so, and then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the gas valve, which in this case is over here. Um, yours may be up here somewhere, but mine's just this right here. I'm gonna show you that to you real quick as well. All right, so that is the gas shutoff valve in my water heater right there. So when it's pointing in line with the pipe, that means it's on. So all you gotta do is turn it a quarter turn clockwise, and now we are in the off position. All right, so now that we got the gas off and the water heater power turned off, we're gonna go ahead and turn off the water that's going into it, and also the water that's leaving it. So. Go ahead and just give these a quarter turn clockwise. Now they may be very stiff if they've never been turned before. Okay, so that cold water going to the water heaters off and then the outlet sides also off. Now what we can do is just to get rid of whatever water was in the, wa in the water heater, we could just pull up like that on the pressure relief device and uh, it'll just drain out whatever little water that was in there. All right, so before we begin descaling, um, a lot of these units have a pre-filter just to keep out any sort of crud from going in to the water heater in the first place. And uh, those, um, this is a good time to clean that out. Now, Amazon sells these uh, pre-filters for like eight bucks for two, so if you open yours up and it's really scaled, you know, it's got a lot of buildup and you can't clean it out, just replace it. I keep them on hand just in case that that was to happen. I don't anticipate that to be the case, but uh, it could. I mean, I could, they can probably just be cleaned by using like a toothbrush and uh, back flushing with a little bit of water. Uh, and get, the way to get the filter out is you're probably gonna have to use a wrench right here and just Turn it clockwise, this whole plastic unit is threaded, so it should just come out. Um, it's just, yeah, don't worry if a little bit of water comes out, but uh, yeah, it should just thread right out with a channel lock. I think that should be enough to for me to do it by hand. There we go. All right. And as anticipated, my filter is pretty clean. I'll probably just spray it with uh, a spray bottle full of water to back flush it out real, real quick. Okay, so I got my filter cleaned up. Um, I will provide a link 
to where you can get these filters off of Amazon from. So it'll just pop up around now in the video. Shall you decide that you want to just go ahead and replace it or have them on hand for backup. Um, so after that, we're just gonna go ahead and just uh, put it back on. Um, like I said, don't worry if it drips out a little bit. It's just uh, whatever backflow in the house is coming through there. It's no big deal. So here is the kit we're going to be using to descale our water heater. It runs around between 130 to 140 bucks, which it'll pay itself off in one use. It's by Chromex, and I'll link it um, in this video, so it should pop up around now. So you could just click on the pop-up and get your kit. Um, you can use it for years on end. All you'll need to do is get a descaler every year, but everything else is reusable basically the kit comes with a cold water line a hot water line some uh, of these washers that you need to insert on right here before you just install it I don't know why they didn't just ins okay they inserted them on one side but not on the other but yeah just make sure just to install install these washers um, before you hook this up to your water heater simple and uh, comes with a pump obviously uh, the solution, which is pretty much we're going to be using the one-time use. So we're going to be adding this whole thing to a um, one gallon of water. So basically, we're going to put one gallon of water in this bucket right here. And then just dump in the solution. And that's pretty much that's all that's in the kit. So I'm going to show you how to hook this thing up and get this thing going. Alright, so I went ahead and added the rubber washer to these hoses. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach them to our water heater via these access ports. So we just got to undo the cover of the access port and attach the red hose to the hot water access port. And then you can do maybe a quarter turn with your channel locks. No reason to go crazy. There we go. We'll do the same thing with cold water. Now we're going to take our cold water line and just connect that to our pump. After that, we're going to add the whole one bottle, 32 fluid ounces of that descaling agent into one gallon of water. I've already added the water. Then we're gonna go ahead and just drop in the pump and also that hot water line which is gonna serve as the return line. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be turning on the, or turning the valves the service valves for both the cold and the hot water lines, or the blue and the red, into the on position. So first we're gonna turn on this blue one, so that's now in the on, and also the red one. All right, notice that the other two valves are off, so they're still off. This one that leads the cold water in is still off, and the one that supplies the water to your house, the hot water to your house, is still off. So only the service port for the red is on and the service port valve for the blue is on. After that, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the pump. All right, let's go ahead and just plug in the pump. I don't think there's an on and off button for the pump. It should just start pumping immediately. And we should we know that we've hooked up everything correctly if we get a return flow from this water line which we are getting right there 
I don't want to splash too much of that water because it's got that cleaning or descaling agent in there. But yeah, so just verify that you are getting return flow. And once you've done that, um, it says to leave that cycling through for 30 to 45 minutes. On the duct tape mechanic, we always believe in that better, more is better. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we, I will leave it like that for 45 minutes. About uh, 10 minutes into the descaling process and you can tell the water has already started turning pretty dark. So I imagine after 45 minutes it's probably going to be darker than that. So it's been about 45 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the pump and we're going to begin the flushing procedure. All right, so to flush this thing out of any sort of, of residual um, descaling agent, first we're going to do is close off the blue service port, so like that, and then just take off the water line for the blue water line. And then close up that port as well. Then we can remove our pump and uh, just set it aside. We're done with that until next year. I'm just going to put it down on this uh, plastic bag over here. And then also go ahead and just take out the red um, water hose as well. And then just dump out the contents of this cleaning um, or the bucket, I should say, and then we should be ready for the flush. All right, so just to make my life easier while I'm flushing this thing, I went ahead and got another second bucket, I should say. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just put our red line back into one of the buckets. All right, so then we're going to go back up to our valve station right here, if you want, to call it that, and uh, turn on the cold water going in. So we still have the hot water going out, is still off. The port for the hot or the red line is, is on. This port is off and we're just gonna turn on the cold water and that's just gonna flush everything that was in that water heater down into this line and into our bucket. And we wanna do that for five minutes or so or until we start seeing clear water. So um, it's gonna probably gonna go through a couple of these buckets. That's why I got two of them. So I'll just switch the buckets when I notice that it's getting, it was filling up. So let's go ahead and just turn on this valve right here. And I believe it should just turn on like that. Remember, maybe you don't need to turn it on full speed like I did. Just a nice slow control. Okay, yeah, go ahead and turn it on partially like I would say quarter of the way fully on otherwise your little outlet hose right here is gonna go crazy there we go I got it about quarter turned on if I was to turn this thing all the way vertical that uh, outlet hose would just fly out of the bucket but anyways it's filling up now and uh, once it gets to near the top I'm just gonna switch to this bucket and I'm gonna do that until the water gets clear So that is the fourth bucket and that water looks pretty clear to me. It's also been about five minutes. So now what we're going to do is return this thing to back to normal operations. So while it's filling up, we can just go ahead and just turn off the red service port valve right here. Just like so. And now there's no more water going into the bucket. Okay, so once we've got the port off right there, the service port off right there, the water will stop going into the bucket and we can just undo this water line. All right, so after that water line has been undone, you can go ahead and just fully turn on that cold water going into the house. Remember, we had partially turned it on before, and that's now fully turned on. Also, you can turn on 
the hot water going into the house. I should say cold water going in to the water heater and the hot water going in to the house. Okay, now that both of those are on and the service ports are now off. Awesome. Now what we can do is turn on the gas valve. So to turn on the gas um, back on, all we got to do is make sure that this is parallel to the gas line. So we're just going to turn it like so. And now gas is back on. Then go ahead and plug in your water heater. Plugging it in, go ahead and turn it on. All right, so that is how you do the yearly maintenance and descaling of your tankless water heater system. So that is important. As you saw, the color of the water heater or the water coming out after the flush was substantially darker than the water that typically goes in um, or the regular house water. So there was a significant amount or a decent amount of buildup in that thing. I wouldn't expect it to be significant because this is a fairly new unit. But anyways, it does come with this little tag that I forgot to mention at the start um, where you could just write the date that you serviced it. And so you remember to do it again one year from that date. Anyways, if you found that video to be helpful, make sure you hit the thumbs up sign.